Well, good morning. Didn't the choir sound amazing? I think it might have something to do with their new robes. They look great. They sound great. They remind us to ponder anew what God is doing in our midst. I am so excited to be here with you this morning. It is a real privilege to be joining your church. And I want to thank you for the warm welcome that you have extended to me and to my family. And the salad potluck after the second service will be a time when we can talk more in depth about what interim ministry is meant to be about. What it looks like, what your part is, what my part is, the parts that the staff do, eventually a pastor nominating committee, all of those things we'll be talking about more at the very cleverly named event, What to Expect when you are expecting a pastor. I don't know who came up with that, but that is very clever, and I'm going to remember that one. Well, my journey to Hamlin Park began with a phone call from Cheryl Kinder Pyle, our executive presbyter here, and we talked about my unique experience, my unique sense of call to interim ministry. And we talked about my experience in church settings that are very much akin to Hamblin Park. And then she began to describe your history as a church, your incredible ministries, your very talented staff, your generous heart for community outreach and for missions. And I was intrigued from the very start. And at the end of the phone call, I had one question for her. How do you spell Hamblin? Because I wanted to get out there on the internet and take a look at more things about your church. And at each step along the way, I felt a growing sense of God's call on my life to come and serve as your interim pastor. It began with a hiring team that interviewed me, a wonderful group of folks. It was affirmed in conversations with colleagues in the PCUSA across the country and ultimately was affirmed by the session. And here's the icing on the top of this wonderful treat. It came like this when Pastor Betsy very gently pulled me aside at the end of that session meeting and she said, and I think I almost have this verbatim, I hope it's okay with you, Pastor Betsy said, but I have outlined a sermon series for the fall. I would like to show it to you, and it mirrors, tracks along with the adult education themes for the fall. And I said, oh, that sounds wonderful. Thank you. What a gift to work with such a talented associate. This morning, we are launching that sermon series, and we are looking at how Christians view time, talents, and treasure. Each of these gifts is given to us by God for our use and for our enjoyment. What Pastor Betsy knows to be true and what our entire staff affirms is this. It matters to God how we use our time. It matters to God how we use our resources and how we invest our treasure. Time being our days and our years, our talents being those things that seem to come to us naturally, like a choir singing beautifully, like the beautiful grounds that are kept up so beautifully around here as a witness to God's creation, all of those things that we're just naturally drawn to, and then our treasures, all of those resources that God gives to us in so, such a rich variety. Scripture offers us very practical lessons on these matters, and together I trust we will be discovering life-giving lessons that are applicable to the newest and to the most seasoned among us. And if you wish to stay for the 1030 hour and participate in the adult ministries, classes on the three T's, time, treasure, talent, you'll be able to dig even deeper into this wonderful series that we're going to be learning from together. 
One of the first things we've got to understand when it comes to these topics is the Christian understanding of steward. And this beautiful image all throughout Scripture that those who know God steward the resources that God gives us. And all Christians, therefore, are stewards. So what is a steward? What is a biblical definition? I would propose that the biblical definition goes like this. A steward is someone who takes something that has been given to them and wisely multiplies it for the sake of the kingdom. Some of the parables, in fact, that you looked at this summer dealt with this idea of stewardship. So I think we should just dive right in. And our scripture passage this morning comes from Psalm 90. It is called a prayer of Moses. You'll find it on page 547 in your pew Bible. And as I read it, I invite you to think about Moses as a steward whom God entrusted with the days of the lives of God's people. The word of the Lord. Lord, you have been our dwelling place for all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight is like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger, by your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath, your years come to our, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are seventy years, or perhaps eighty if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So, teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long. Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper the work of our hands. Oh, yes, prosper the work of our hands. This is the word of the Lord. Did you hear it? Did you hear the echoing refrains about time woven all through this psalm attributed to Moses? Verses 3 through 11 are that recount that long and difficult litany of complaint about the days of our lives. They are filled with toil and trouble and all we amount to is dust. In verse 13, did you hear the voice of Moses pleading with God to turn from his anger, to turn aside and to once again regard us, his people. 
The verse that is the focus of our attention this morning is found in verse 12. Teach us to count our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Don't we all want that? Yes, a heart of wisdom. To gain it, we are to number our days. Moses recognized that numbering our days is not something that comes naturally to us. It is, in fact, something that we learn. And it is more than just simply ticking off days on a calendar. Do you do that? Kind of enjoyable. End of a day, got that done. On to the next. But it's more than that. It is a holy habit that we are to learn. And all throughout this series, we are going to be looking at holy habits that will bring life, life anew to us. Martin Luther, in reflecting on Psalm 90, came to this conclusion. Our days and years can bring us gladness when we entrust life and our future to God. And isn't that our chapter right now? Only then can we experience the passing of time as something to be counted. Put another way, we are invited to make our days and years count. We all want to count, don't we? Well, wisdom from on high is available to us through Jesus Christ. And through walking alongside brothers and sisters in Christ in our community, through faithful reflection on God's word, we can learn to be faithful stewards of the time that God entrusts to us. And when we do this, our days gain focus, and we are filled with the energy of the Spirit. One way we might do this, and many of you probably already do, is you reflect on a portion of Scripture at some point in your day. And I would offer to you that Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2, might be a couple of great verses to begin your morning with this coming week as we remember God's faithfulness, whether it is recalled through the beautiful anthem of the choir that lingers in our hearts or these words that come right out of Scripture. We can begin our days with gladness when we remember that it is God who entrusts us with this gift of time. Hamblin Park, Presbyterian Church, you can be confident that God's future for us is already unfolding. You believe it? Yes. As stewards entrusted with this particular time in the history of this church, Psalm 90 invites us to not be anxious about this interim season. God longs to make this time count for the sake of the kingdom. At the end of Psalm 90, we hear this echo in Moses' voice. Hear it once more. Establish the work of our hands. Oh, yes, Lord, establish the work of our hands. As a church embarking on a new chapter, we can do this with gladness, confident that God will establish the work of our hands. Amen.